Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Halloween. Let's take a look at radar and see what we've got. So, as expected, the flow continues to target the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia. That's where the action is. That's where our storm systems are going for probably the next five days. And then it will it may change after that. But that leaves most of the west high and dry. Big area of high pressure. A lot of dry air in place there across the west. Um, let me jump into my bullet points here. Talk a little bit about what I'm expecting. So we're in that dry lull right now. California, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, parts of southern Idaho as well included within that and even parts of eastern Montana. Kind of out of the flow. There is one little uh, front coming through. I'll show you that in a second. Storm track, like I was saying, really favors the Pacific Northwest and B.C., and all of that, within, within, included within that, there are two to three atmospheric river surges, one happening between today, tomorrow, and the second, and then maybe another couple embedded within 11, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Here are your best odds of snow. Um, so Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. So for example, there is a little front coming through. Um, Idaho, basically the afternoon, evening of 11.1 into 11.2. It's not major, that's for sure. It's just a fast-moving front. And that is reflected in um, that forecast there. And maybe even, it may brush parts of Montana on 11.2 uh, as well. It's not out of the realm of possibility in Wyoming. That little front may produce a tiny little bit of snow I don't show it there. It's just such, such a small chance. But once we get into these later dates, the chances of snow across a lot of the West start going up. I'm um, drilling down on this just a little bit. Select locations. There's Alta. You've got two to four coming on 11 6, 6 to 12, 11 12, 13, and 14. I'm not going to go through all these, but snow mass is there. Jackson Hole. There's Payette National Forest. There's that little tiny front, about an inch, late 11 1 into 11 2. Um, that's up there in central Idaho. Uh, Mount Baker, you've got some big snow in the forecast. I mean, look at those numbers. 30, 16, 40, 50. And these are at higher elevations. This is not at the base area. This is this is higher up on Baker. Fitzsimmons Range up there in BC. Mount Hood. Uh, Mount Washington. We'll talk a little bit about the northeast today. You can see these chances. These are not obviously major snowfalls, but... A little more consistent now than where we've been. Starting to see these little uh, shots of snow. Um, let's talk a little bit about the west here. Here's the forecast uh, radar and satellite. No, just the forecast radar. So this is, uh, we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Friday, October 31st. There's your precip targeting the Pacific Northwest and BC. All right, let's move this ahead in time. So here we are, 6 a.m. on Saturday, November 1st. So rolling over the, ca over the calendar to November 1st. All the precip, my friend, is up here in the Pacific Northwest. And it is clipping northern Idaho and northwest Montana. Alberta, B.C., getting in on the action. There's a lunch hour. All right, now a little piece of that starts to break away. So this is the dinner hour. Uh, on Saturday, November 2nd, you can see the, the little tiny piece that breaks away. And this is that little front I was referring to. So it does brush central Idaho and probably western Montana. And the direction of movement is down in this direction. Move this ahead. All right, so that's probably midnight, late Saturday into Sunday morning. And this is what I was referring to. It's possible a little tiny bit of that precip may graze the Tetons and Yellowstone on its way through. But again, there's not a lot to write home about. There it is. That's, that's probably, I mean, this does indicate maybe an inch of accumulation there across the Tetons. We'll see between late one into early two. Um, Let's see where we're at here. So now we're moving into Monday. So that's the early morning. That's probably 5, 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, November 3rd. The other front has fizzled. Now we're back to another little surge for Oregon, Washington, and the Pacific Northwest. 
So that's how the precip plays out in time. Let's look at atmospheric pressure anomalies. So you're looking at either low or higher than normal pressures than normal. There's your, this is effective today, Halloween. There's your big Halloween high pressure with oranges and reds. And your drops in pressure, your big areas of low pressure over here and here across the Midwest and the Northeast. All right, moving ahead, this is Thursday, 11-6. Now, between today and 11-6, again, we're in that dry lull for a lot of the West, especially the Inner Mountain. But look what happens on 11-6. A drop in pressure right here. There's an area of low pressure. It pushes some energy in to Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado right around the 6th. So that's potentially going to produce a little bit of snow around 11.6. Looking down the road, still looking at a comparison here for 11.8, Saturday 11.8, between the operational and the, and the AI model. Now they've come into a little better agreement. You can see the drop in pressures right here. That would affect Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. Now if the AI is right, there's a little bigger pressure drop. And you can see the area of low pressure here. That would definitely affect Montana, Wyoming, maybe Utah, uh, if the AI is right, and Colorado. So we'll keep looking at those comparisons as we move ahead. This is the forecast for atmospheric, or the atmospheric river. Uh, this is integrated vapor transport effective for the Pacific Northwest. So this is our next surge. That's a strong surge, a strong intensity. Uh, on this scale uh, for the atmospheric river coming late 31 into 1, early 2. And then you've got potentially a couple of additional surges here between 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And what will happen is, again, pieces of this will break off and move into the interior Rockies. So that's your atmospheric river. Here's 10-day total precip. It's at least 10 days. It may, this may go out beyond that, but you get the idea. So watch when this uh, restarts at the beginning. Watch the axis. Through about the next five days, most of the precip stays up to the north of that line. Then, as we break that uh, on or around the 6th, we start to right there, we see some precip drop into California. A little bit will brush the Tetons, uh, Utah, and also Colorado. Watch it again. This is as if everything fell as rain, and then towards the very end of the period, there's a bigger surge. But guys, I mean, up here in B.C., Washington, northern Idaho, Alberta, there is, I mean, look at those bright pinks. You're talking 10 inches of liquid or more. That's big time snow. All right, as if this all fell as snow um, at the higher elevations, a 10 to 1 ratio. 10 day snow, at least 10 day snow. You can see how this plays out. So initially, again, all the snows north of this line for the next five days. Then it starts to break. And then look at the snow towards the end of the accumulation, towards the end of the animation. There's your snow in California. Picks up in Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado towards the end. And actually, there's some pretty big totals right at the end of this animation. There you go. Many play any Anywhere you see the purple or the pink, that's over six inches of accumulation. I mean, up here where you have these, you're beyond the, the gray into the the pink, I mean, you're up here on the high end of the scale up there at three feet or more. All right, let's take a trip up to the northeast. Again, it comes in little waves. This is at least 10 days out so that you can see a rolling accumulation. All right, so there's a little bit. There's a little bit. There's a little bit. Another wave and then a bigger wave towards the end. All right, so what does that actually look like? at some of the ski areas. Well, here's Mount Washington. We'll just look at Mount Washington as an extreme case first. So Mount Washington up there in New Hampshire, um, this snow plume accumulates, this ensemble, Aver, Mameen, actually accumulates about a foot through November 15th on Mount Washington. And you can see it comes in little waves here, there, there, like I was showing you in that timeline earlier. Um, it doesn't all come at one time, in fact, you can see it right here on Mount Washington. There's a couple inches. There's four. There's four. There's another four. Um, so that's how it that's how it all happens over the course of time, and you can see it right there. Towards the end, some of these error bars are up around 15 to 20 inches, as a very extreme case. 
Let's go up to J Peak Vermont. Here's J Peak Vermont. Uh, the ensemble means about seven inches by November 15th. You can see a little there, a little there, a little there, another little there. So, you know, maybe four waves, four storms. Um, but we're just starting to get into the flow now. Uh, it was a little warm before. Now, at times, it's cold enough to see some snow accumulation. The air bars here are up around 12 to 15 inches on the extreme. So pretty interesting. All right, let's go back to Jackson here. Jackson, Wyoming. Ensemble means 7.4 by November 15th and some pretty big error bars by then. So that's Jackson, nothing. Look at that, that's the big lull right there. That's your lull for about the next five days until we get on or after the sixth. That's the turning point. Here's Berthoud Pass and it's just unfortunate. It is so dry. There's your five day lull right there. There's nothing, high pressure. Then you start to see a couple of different areas of low pressure move in and potentially small accumulations, minor snow accumulations. I mean, this only accumulates three inches through November 15th on the ensemble. Um, okay, yeah, just another way of looking at that across the West. This is your five-day snow. So this is just out five days. This shows you the lull. Yeah, there's a little bit in California for sure at higher elevations, but look at Utah, look at Wyoming, look at Colorado. There's barely anything there through five days. Now, after that, that's when we start to see the biggest stuff take place. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update on this Halloween. I hope everybody has a wonderful day today, and I appreciate you tuning in here. Take care.